Hey guys, welcome to another video by Into Fly Fishing. In this video, we're gonna talk about 2022. We're gonna do a quick roundup of all the epic fly fishing adventures that myself and the rest of the team here at Into Fly Fishing had all around the world last year. All right, so the year started off with one of my main bucket list items for fly fishing, and that was Jurassic Lake or Lago Strobel in Southern Patagonia in Argentina. And it was a fantastic trip. Uh, we started off around Bariloche, which is more like central Patagonia. And I did a lot of fly fishing around that, that city. And we had a rental car and drove around to a few different rivers and went fishing and had a blast. But then we headed down to El Calafate where we met with the guys from Jurassic Lake Lodge and they took us out to the lodge. And I have to tell you guys, it was an incredible experience. We drove out to the middle of nowhere in Patagonia. There were no buildings in sight. It was like a three hour drive from the nearest city. And when we got there, I just can't even explain it. The views were beautiful. The lodge just sits on the edge of the lake and on the mouth of the river in the most beautiful setting. And every morning we got up at you know 6 a.m., headed down to the river, did some fly fishing. And basically the entire day was fish in the morning, eat, fish, eat, fish, sleep, and that was it for seven days straight. And it was a dream come true. The fishing was incredible. Uh, the biggest fish I ended up catching was a 22 pound rainbow. And all the fish are rainbow there actually. There's no variation of fish species, which I think would be nice to see, but it is a world-class rainbow trout fishery. Uh, and yeah, that same day that I caught that 20 pound or 22 pound rainbow, I caught three or four others that were all over 10 pounds. Uh, but it wasn't just the fishing and the size of the fish that made it such an incredible trip. It was the day spent with the one guide that I had, Rado. He's a great guy. We became really good friends by the end of it. It was the scenery that we had at the lodge. It was the service that we had while we were at the lodge and in the lodge. It was the food that they fed us. It was being, you know, so secluded in Patagonia with this pristine nature all around us. And it was just an incredible, incredible trip and definitely lived up to all my expectations for both the fishing and the experience itself. If you guys ever get the chance to, I know it's super expensive, but a trip down to Lago Strobel in Argentina is definitely worth the money and definitely worth it to tick it off of your bucket list for fly fishing. Next up, the team went to the Maldives and this one was pretty funny actually because Pierre messaged me sometime uh, just after finishing the trip in Jurassic on WhatsApp and he was saying, you know, I've got this epic eight day Maldives fishing trip that we can go on with into fly fishing and do you want to join? And unfortunately, I already had travel plans booked and fishing plans booked. So I had to decline because they were going in about a month after that or two months. And I didn't have time to cancel my plans and go with the guys. But I'm so glad that we ended up sending them on the trip. And Chris, our resident filmmaker, he filmed the entire thing and the guys did a fantastic job. Uh, the fishing was grueling the entire time they were out there. I think they spent a week fly fishing around different islands in the Maldives. And yeah, they were in the surf getting battered and bruised, but they hooked into some decent sized GTs and bluefin and other smaller reef species. And they just had a blast. And, you know, I haven't done that much fly fishing in salt water in my day and seeing how hard it was for the guys, even though they're really experienced, Pierre has been a guide in Costa Rica and around the world for saltwater fly fishing outfits. So he knows what he's doing. Chris knows what he's doing. Uh, I would have had a really hard time tossing a 12 weight for 12 hours a day out there getting battered by the waves without much experience. So I'm glad I sat this one out, but that's one of my goals for this year too, is just to get better at saltwater fly fishing so we can bring you guys some more of that epic saltwater fly fishing content here on the channel. But yeah, if you guys haven't seen the fly fishing in Maldives uh, series, I've linked it down below. There's an entire playlist and Pierre even did a bunch of really informative videos as well, just talking about how to catch different saltwater species on the fly rod. And as well, him and Chris did a guide on fly fishing the Maldives, what to pack, uh, what to expect and all that kind of stuff. So check the links in the description down below. All right, so next up, I went to Bulgaria. This was the start of my Eastern European fly fishing adventure for 2022. I landed here in March or April and Bulgaria was my first stop. And I know what you're thinking, probably a lot of you haven't heard about Bulgaria or heard about the fly fishing here, but it is a really beautiful country and it's a great place to hit up some European rivers with fewer fishing crowds. You know, a lot of the rivers in this part of the world are crowded. Uh, and a lot of them run through, you know, cities and towns, which we'll talk about later about our Slovakia leg of the journey. But 
Basically here in Bulgaria, there are fewer anglers on the river and there's actually some decent fishing here. There's a lot of mountain rivers and streams here where you can hook into some decent, you know, two to five pound trout, uh, browns and rainbows. But there's this spot that really has some great fishing. It's just below a dam and they have some massive fish in there. So I went there a couple times with two different local guides here and they showed me the ropes and we hooked into some beautiful brown trout, some rainbow trout as well. And it was just a blast fishing here in Bulgaria, being away from the crowds, being in a place that not many anglers know about. You know, it felt like we were kind of pioneering some of these areas. So that was a lot of fun. Next up on my Eastern European fly fishing adventure in 2022, I headed over to Slovakia. Uh, that was like a two hour flight from Bulgaria. And when we landed in Slovakia, almost immediately, we took off and headed up north to the Tatra mountains and we based ourselves in a town of Poprad. Poprad is just really close to the Tatras, basically on the foot of the Tatra mountains. And the Tatra mountains are like the Alps, you know, they're a smaller version of the Swiss Alps or the French Alps, and they are absolutely breathtaking. And there's lots of great fishing, both in small streams and rivers up in the Tatras, as well as some in the lower lying low Tatras and at the foothills of the mountains as well. So basing ourselves in Poprad, I did a few fishing trips up into the mountains, but a lot of it was done in more residential fishing areas. And that's what I have to say about Slovakia. You know, the fishing was good. We hooked into some nice fish, but not all the fishing spots were, were beautiful. You know, some of them were in a village or a town. And even though they had the backdrop of these beautiful mountains, a lot of the time it felt more like residential fishing. And with that came more crowds. You know, it was hard to get away from the crowds because most of the fishing spots were right in towns where people had easy access. And also the licenses are quite expensive at about 25 to 30 euro a day. Uh, that's still a lot cheaper than Slovenia, which I did last year. Uh, check the description for that video as well. But the licenses are pretty restrictive because they're super expensive if you're fishing every day. You know, that adds up really quick. Um, but other than that, I'd say that the fishing in Slovakia was great and definitely worth considering for your next Eastern European fly fishing adventure. And last on our Eastern European trip, uh, I headed up to Poland. I never thought I would ever go fly fishing in Poland really, but it was a two hour drive to the border from where we were staying. And I contacted a local guide from Poland on Instagram and he told me all about the beautiful fishing up there. So I went up and met with this guy and he was awesome. Took me around to some local rivers. Um, I'll leave a link down below for his website and you guys can book him if you wanna go to Poland and go fly fishing. Great guide, uh, knew his stuff, young guy, but definitely really knew what he was doing up there in the rivers in Poland. And we had a blast. We hooked into some nice rainbows and browns. Uh, where we were, it was a mix of kind of natural and more residential or beside the road type fishing spots. So again, you know, not as secluded as you might get in New Zealand or Slovenia or Canada or the US, you know, away from crowds, away from civilization, but still beautiful fishing. And we got some nice fish and there's definitely bigger ones to be caught there. Uh, but on the days that we went, it happened to be the hottest days of the month. And so the fish were either holding really deep or just not feeding for a full six hours of our day together. So uh, we were lucky to get anything and we got quite a few, so that was good. So now I just wanna end this video by talking about what 2023 has to offer. Uh, I'm gonna base myself here in Europe still for the rest of the year, and I can see some unbelievable fishing trips getting planned this year. I think I'm gonna definitely do some more fishing in Bulgaria. I'm hoping to get back for another fly fishing trip in Slovenia, maybe even in the early spring or fall when we can still fish for hucho, the massive, massive salmonoid species that is common in Russia and Mongolia. That would be incredible. Uh, also, I definitely want to go down to Bosnia and Herzegovina, which has some really great fishing. And it, just like Bulgaria, it's really underrated. You know, the Ribnik River is one, but there's many others that hold some massive trout in great numbers. And there's some really cool fly fishing lodges down there as well. And then to end the year, I'm hoping that I can tick off one of my you know, my number one fly fishing bucket list item, and that is heading down to New Zealand. I've been wanting to do this for years and years, both just to travel New Zealand and of course to go fly fishing there. And I think that 2023 might just be the year. So I'm so stoked. I think by the fall, we might be able to hop on a flight, head down to New Zealand for about three months. And I think that, you know, half of that time I'll spend, we'll rent a camper van and drive around the South Island and just fish every day and share those videos with you guys. And the other half we might spend up in the North Island. And if we do that, we're definitely gonna hook up with our buddy Alex from Trippin' on Trout, who's also done some videos on this channel. I'll link those below. But him and I have been chatting back and forth for over a year now. He's been collaborating with us. And so it'd be awesome to meet up with him down there in New Zealand and go on a fly fishing trip with him, maybe for a few days or just, you know, book him out for a couple of his days. I know he's super busy, but that is definitely on my bucket list. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you've been enjoying the videos here on the channel. I know we had kind of 
of a hiatus for a few months here, but we're definitely getting back to it. And you're gonna see more videos coming up on this channel from me and the team. And I want you guys to stick with us because 2023 might be our best year of fly fishing vlogs and informational tutorials ever. So stay tuned. And if you haven't done it already, please hit that subscribe button. I see that a lot of you guys have watched lots of these videos and you still haven't subscribed. I just wanna let you know that it helps us so much when you click that subscribe button. We're trying to grow this channel up, trying to help more people get into the sport of fly fishing and, and you know learn from these guides that we have on the team and these casting instructors and these experts. So definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well so you'll be notified next time we come up with a new video like this. Until next time, tight lines. Later guys. Oh